Welcome back to Gail Bear's Repairs. Today we're going to replace the sump or reseal the sump on this 2010 Jeep Patriot. It's got the two liter TDI Volkswagen engine fitted to it. So we'll see how we get along with that. And if you found it useful today and it's given you the confidence to carry out the task yourself, could you please like, subscribe and share. All right, let's get on with it. Eh? Because uh, this video can either be used for <laughs> All right, so down under the front of the car now We have to move this big tray in order to drop the oil out from under the car There's no hole in it That's just a securing bolt There's about six or seven um, 10 mil bolts six mil threads 10 mil heads so I'll get that down and then we can drop the oil out. All right, so what we've got to do to drain the oil is crack off the sump plug. It's a 19 millimeter spanner. Get him on there, give him a clout. There we go, so he's cracked off now. Okay, I've got me bowl and we'll just spin this one off by hand, get ready. Get ready for it to come out everywhere. So here we go. Get ready for the money shot. Here he goes. Okay, it's been about five minutes now, the oil draining. It's essential that you put the plug, the sump plug back in now. Don't forget it or else you'll be pouring brand new oil in the engine and it'll be running out the bottom. So do it now while you're here. That's what you can expect to see. It's effectively, it's just a bolt, that's all. But it's a sump plug. I'm not sure if this one's magnetic. There was no particles on the end of the plug. Some of them are magnetic and you may get metal deposits from engine wear sticking on there, so. Tighten them up. That's him tight. Okay, so to remove the sump, it looks like we've got these bolts all the way around, the securing bolts, and they just go all the way around, all the way around the perimeter. Now the only thing that's uh, different is you've got this bolt here that attaches it to the bellows in the sump and that bolt there attaches it to bellows in. And then when you come around the other side, there's a bolt there, that one passes through the bellows in and comes out in the sump there, there. So that's attached to the sump. So there's three large bolts, a ring of bolts all the way around the flange. And then the other ones that you need to know about is there are three up in there. So there's one up there, one up there, and one up in there. So those holes have been created especially for the sump securing bolt. Right, we'll start uh, removing. Okay, so I'm gonna attempt these awkward ones first. I'm gonna try and get the hard stuff out of the way first. What I've got is a five mil hex Allen key but he's got a ball on the end so that I can get a bit of an angle so I can get a bit of movement on him. It's a five mil. So I can't show this on. So there's one up there, one up there, one up there. Oh, there's another one, there's four. So there's four along that flange. So I'll get up there. Right, I'm in the hex. I don't know what your lighting's like, but I'm up through that hole into the hex. Oh. Oh, he's tight. So they're cracked up tight. So that's one slackened off. Get into the next one. Oh, he's at an angle. Next one there. Oh, yes. Yeah, got him. That's number two. 
And then number three, oh, he's not going in nicely. We give him a little. Oh yeah, that feels home, that's in. If you rang this bolt head off. If you rang off these bolt heads, you're gonna be in a world of pain. Well, not you, me. So, and then the last one. He's in line. Oh yeah, he's gone right into the head of the bolt there. So that's it. So they're all cracked off, they the difficult ones. I'll just spin them out now, put it on time lapse, I'll speed it up. Right, the next thing, I've got them out successfully in there with that, um, with that rounded hex socket. You do need something that you can jiggle about in there. Something like a bit of jiggery pokery that you can uh, get some alignment on because they are misaligned with the hose. So next thing, I'm going to undo those side bolts there. What size is that? 15 mil, 15 mil spanner. Oh, and the one around the back. So this will be a long bolt that passes through the bellows in and the sump. There he is. So that's the nice long one. Look, decent length bolt there. And then we've got the two on the other side, the shorter bolts. So now we've got them out. We've got the three large ones there, the four that are hidden, they're stashed away in there. Now it's just easily accessible bolts all the way around. Oh, there's an intercooler pipe. It looks like he's held on there. I'll, I'll take you off the stand and show you. So here's all the fixing, fixing bolts around the front of the sump that I didn't show earlier. And look, there's that intercooler. It's just a bracket, it's nothing special. So you just undo that one to release it from the sump. So that's it, we can just get around now and undo the, all the ones around the outside. Right, before I go fully around the ring of bolt, I've just got to disconnect this. I'm taking it, it's oil pressure switch or oil switch or whatever. And then we just pull them out of the loom clips there. So that'll stay with the vehicle now. So we're actually ready to crack off the rest of them bolts all the way around the sump. Okay, so that's the ones around the back and around the side. Just go around the front of the sump now. Right, just the ones around the front. Well, I've got my pry bar. Let's have a go at um, prising us off. So there's a big bracket there. I'm gonna go in between there. Oh yeah, we got a bit of movement. You can hear the sealant cracking away. Oh, it's come away nicely. So we lower the sump. That bracket's all the way over there. And there's our sump removed. And staring at us. Staring at us is the oil pickup. There's the oil pickup pipe. Goes up there, and that's the oil pump on the end there. And this is the balance shaft, the balance shaft assembly here. 
All right, so here's the sump removed. I'm gonna to have to scrape off all of this gasket, the liquid gasket around the perimeter, around the flange. The flange all looks in good condition and we've had no leaks. All right, we'll do a bit of scraping up, clean up all this joint material. So it's just rubber, liquid gasket, just sealant that goes on these. Obviously it's gotta be the correct sealant that's uh, oil, oil and heat resistant. I'll uh, stop the video there. I'll just carry on cleaning up myself and uh, it'll get boring. I'll just show you it when it's clean. Okay, so all my jointing surfaces are clean now. They're all spotless, degreased, and removal of any previous gasket material. After I scraped, I just went around with a bit of dishes uh, scouring pad. Something to note, this section here, is the block of the engine that's cast that's cast uh iron and this timing cover on the end here he's made out of aluminium so be a bit more gently uh gently gently when you're scraping there not to dig in the alley so this is the sort of finish that you should be expecting clean flat smooth degreased no oil on it something that's worth note a friend of a friend told me about this before i started the job this uh, plastic section here. So there's threaded inserts into there. That's two of the sump bolts. So when you're tightening these up, do it to the correct specification. I think it's something like 15 newton meters or 10 newton meters. But do not cream up those or your brass threaded inserts will strip out of that plastic section. So it's all clean all the way around. And this is the sort of finish you should be trying to achieve to, to ensure a long, a long uh, tight seal on your sump. Right, I'll show you the sump. Just got a drill bit. There is sealant uh, contained within the, the bolt holes here. So I just want to get that out. I'm not going to use a drill in a drill. I just want it to pop out. I just want it to pop out these little round pieces of sealant that are contained within the holes. So just flick it out. So now we'll have a bit of a uh, bit of the dishes pad on here. This is the sort of finish you should be looking at. You can see the machining marks from the factory. That all aids the sealant to grip in there. But you should be looking at a gasket, a jointing surface like this in order for it to be successful. That's what you're looking for. I will also give this a wash out some debris in there now. 
give it a wash out with some brake cleaner and I'll brake clean down these joint surfaces one more time. Just basic uh, scouring pads, just basic dishes stuff, you know, so that's all we're, that's all we're using to clean up that joint in face. Don't use sandpaper on this job. It's an aluminium, it's soft aluminium. The sandpaper, you will ruin the joint surface and probably won't be able to get a, a seal in the future. So only use lightweight, lightweight stuff on aluminium like this. Just clean up, spend more time doing it. Right, let's uh, give it a wash out, get some gunge and then uh, start putting it back up. Okay, so if you're renewing the sump on your two liter TDI Volkswagen engine, this one's fitted to Jeep Patriot, but it's fitted to Golfs, Passats, it's fitted to a lot of VAG, VAG cars, or Volkswagen cars. Um, if you're renewing it, this is the 140 brake horsepower PD engine, the TDI turbo diesel engine. And this is the part number that you're looking at if you're replacing your sump. Okay, I've been um, I've been trying to clean up these bolts, and I was struggling with uh, getting the getting the old sealant out of the thread. If you can see there, there's all the sealant that's got to come out, and I wanted to degrease them. And the only way that was uh, I could see that I could easily do. Like I've got all this stuff out already, and the the uh, silicon there. And that was to get them in a get a bolt and a drill with a wire brush. And that was the only way that I can successfully successfully strip it out. Just a bit more on that one. So there we go, that's what I've been doing. It's a bit laborious, um, but I think the end result, I'll give it a spray with some brake cleaner. So give them a spray with some brake cleaner to degrease, and that's my end result there. So I don't know if it's picking up because the light's falling, it's evening now. So that's what I'm ending up with. There, clean threads. Now I've done it on all these. It's a bit laborious, but I think it's an essential thing for getting a good joint and alignment of the sump on refitting. Because if you look at that there, that sealant on there, it's not going to end well, is it? Um, and I'm clamping it in the the uh, drill, the chuck. By that end, that's not threaded. If you can see there, the end's not threaded, so I'm not crushing the threads. So that's what I've been doing. It's probably a good tip for if you if you're changing the sump. Okay, so that's all my jointing surfaces degreased and cleaned up. There's that plastic insert, all cleaned and degreased. So the whole jointing area now is ready to accept the sump. I've just checked my footage <clears throat> and it didn't show me putting the uh, sealant on. For some reason, the uh, the video didn't start. I've used some old sealant now that I've left over from a previous job. It's just black, basically RTV. So this is from uh, an Alpha <laughs> that I've done a sump on. Um, it's just effectively sealant so I just put a bead all the way around circling the uh, circling the hole the bolt holes it's only a thin bead you don't want nothing too much because you don't want it squeezing out into the sump and causing problems blocking the uh, blocking the oil pickup in the future so we'll uh, we'll chuck this up now all right so we're going to lift up the sump now and just <coughs> just catch a couple of bolts we've got our sealant on 
So we just want to get it up there. Try not to touch anything and smear the sealant around. Right, that's squidged up quite nicely. I'll just catch a bolt. Just to take the load off. So just wind them in just to a light nip. You can just see the sealant starting to slightly squidge out. So now all I'll do is while that's loose, we can catch all the other bolts now. But we're not doing it, we're not gonna do anything up tight. We want it all loose just to get alignment so that we can still have a little bit of movement on the sump to catch all the, uh, to catch all the bolts. Well, I've been around and um, I've been around and nipped up around the sump. I've kept I've kept the four best heads in best condition to go up in those uh, those ones that are tucked away up in there. So I've kept the ones that are in the best condition for that. So um, because it's awkward to gain access to and and they're at an angle. So when I'm doing that one, doing these up, it's not, we're not going straight on. We're coming in at a bit of an angle on it, which is why we've got the ball, the ball headed Allen's key. So I've kept the best ones for there to give me the best chance of getting alignment. All right, let's pop them in. Remembering, remembering what the friend of the friend said, that the centre two are in those brass brushes, so just be cautious to get them in line and not to strip them, because it's uh, a world of pain if you get it wrong. So there's one nipped. I've got old eyes now, I need a... Uh, I need a light to see this type of thing. Yeah, so these are the ones that are misaligned. They are, they are at a funny angle. So you do need this ball head. You do need that ball headed Allen, Allen key. Okay, so that's them lightly nipped. All right, so I've got, I've got all of my uh, bolts around the perimeter of the sump. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna catch these side ones and give them a light nip so that we can pull, so that we're pulling the sump while it's still loose and the sealant's not gone off. We're just gonna pull it that way slightly to make sure it's mate in there, just to make sure it's in the right position so that when we do these up, we're not putting the sump under any tension. We don't want it pinched there tight, and then we're trying to do these up and shear one of these tangs off if there's uh, like a millimeter of uh, misalignment. You may snap it off, so with us, I don't know if that's what you're supposed to do, but that's what I'm doing. Right, so what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna preload this. I'm gonna tighten these up, which would pull the sump across.
So now we know that this sump is fully this way. And then I'll just crack them off so they've been preloaded. And then I'll get them off to like a light nip up. So, they're now just on a, so they're now just lightly nipped, so I'm happy with that. So I feel that they're in the correct position that way. So now I'm happy to go around and tighten up all of my uh, bolts there. Uh, they are 15 Newton meters. I'll go around with this one first and then I'll go around with the torque wrench. Fifteen Newton meters is nothing. We're talking a firm a firm nip on a 15, 15 Newton meters. It's basically this this tight that I'm doing now. That's it, I'll just get my torque wrench. All right, let's just get around with the torque wrench now. My torque wrench does actually go that low. I didn't expect it to. Right, so there, all of the um, bolts around the perimeter now are torqued up. So what I'm gonna do now is properly tighten up those three bolts, those three bolts there on the end of the sump. We'll give them a little, a little clout. There we go. That's your sump replaced. I've just got a little bit of a loom to do, the electrical plug, but effectively that's the job done really. Right, so we get the loom down, the electrical plug. I'll plug him in first. You just hear him snap in, and then we'll get him up in there. And there we have it. That is your sump replaced. We've got to uh, put some oil in the engine now before we start it up and check for leaks. I'm gonna leave this to dry for, I've got the, the luxury of not leading this car at the moment. So I'm gonna let this cure, this sealant. I'm gonna let it cure for a couple of days before I put any oil in. Um, I'll just let it properly harden off. But I don't think you do need to do that, but I'm just going to. So it'll be a couple of days now before I get back on this job. But that is effectively the job done. So that's what I've ended up with. That amount of sealant just squishing out. So I'll take it, it'll be the similar amount of sealant squishing out on the inside. I'm not sure if that's too much or not, but... Uh, Hey, it's done now. Something I forgot to say is got to connect up that uh, bracket to the uh, turbo pipe there. That's it. Let's pop some oil in it. So the next step is to uh, fill the oil. This, this car takes um, four litres of 530. And that's on the two litre TDI engine, the Volkswagen, Volkswagen engine fitted to this uh, Jeep Patriot. So we'll start smacking it in. Right, 
Right, so the engine's full of oil. I'm gonna fire up the engine for the first time since uh, renewing the sump or resealing the sump, whichever job you were doing. Um, it's all topped up, we'll spark it up and then we'll shut him down and check for leaks and recheck the oil level. Well, I'm not sure how clearly you can hear me down here. I've got the engine running. We're just checking for leaks. The engine is fully up to temperature. Oh, we've got a bit of flicker from the light and on the LED. There we go. So the engine is completely, completely up to temperature. But no leaks there. Nothing up there in them funny bolts. It's bone dry. Let's flip around. Ugh. Back this. And we are bone dry there. All the way round. Not a drop of oil, so that was a nice technique. And we'll get back. There's the bone. There's the drain plug. Bone dry. And the oil temperature switch is all dry as well. So We'll call that a successful, successful rejoint. So if you find it useful and it's give you the, um, yeah. All right, so there we have it. We've resealed the sump. If you were replacing the sump, it's the same technique. So you would drop down your old sump, put a new one up, clean it the same and reseal it the same with the same jointing compound. Um, there was no leaks on the run-up as we've seen in the, the previous clip. So this is on the Volkswagen 2 litre TDI, the 140 horsepower turbo diesel engine. It's fitted to this 2010 Jeep Patriot, but it's fitted to a lot of other vehicles, Volkswagen Golfs, Passats, etc. You know, yeah. So that's it. It's all done. Very successful. So if you found this useful today, uh, it gives you the confidence to carry out the job yourself. Could you please like, subscribe and share and uh, I'll see you on the next video.